I know it's a gay club, but there's some really hot guys who go there. No, he's not gay. What's the point? Franco is... Have you enjoyed it? Lorraine, you're going to go home and you're going to sleep till 11 and then you're going to wake up and call one of your friends and have brunch. And tell her what a stud you are. I have to be at my desk in two hours. All right, Lorraine, you can't keep turning up here half pissed in the middle of the night demanding sex. Demanding? I'll remind you of that next time you're standing to attention. And this isn't really what it looks like. Coffee. I really hope you wouldn't get me out of bed at the crack of dawn for a car accident. We don't know what it is yet. I'm off the sugar. She was northbound in the left lane. The accident guy said he landed, which means he jumped or someone helped him. Yeah? Yeah, I've had a look on both sides of the bridge. There's no signs of anything. No notes, nothing. Look, he may have been mugged and then thrown over. I'll keep looking around. Righto. Nothing on a bridge. Linda Cosgrove, 19 years old. Poor kid, she wouldn't have known what hit her. This was in his pocket. He wasn't mugged. There's got to be 250 bucks in here. Brilliant. What? Is Charles Zawalski ring any bells? The journalist? You're kidding. I hate to be the one telling that wife of his. You ever met her? Petromark? No. Total bitch. Hmm. Someone will come and get you. You have to sign in. Thank you. So, how do you think you'll take it? Sean, tell the floor I'll be a while. I can finish myself. Petra, are you sure? Someone could sit in for you. I saw that. I will cry. I live my life in public. I deal with it in private. Do you know who killed my husband? Well, we're not sure anyone did yet. He smiled. It may have been an accident, an assault, or there is the possibility of suicide. No, not Charles. He enjoyed himself far too much. Nevertheless, it is one of the things we have to rule out. Consider it ruled out, then. My husband would not kill himself. In that case, can you think of anyone who may have had a grudge against Mr. Zawalski? <laughs> I'll have Sean draw up a list. My husband has many enemies. He's a journalist, for God's sakes. He believes in telling the truth, whatever the consequences. Can you tell us when you last saw your husband, Ms. Mild? About 7 o'clock yesterday evening. I helped tie his bow tie. He was off to a cricket team reunion. His old university, 11. And he was in a perfectly cheerful frame of mind. It sparks his wife. He's still in recovery. I can't help it. She comes around and she wakes me up and then she shags me till she's had enough and then she gets up and gets dressed and buggers off. <laughs> Come on. I love it. It's not funny, Matthew. She is killing me. She bites. <laughs> Who's this? Josh Braddock, Sarge. He, uh, he organised the reunion, Sarge. 
So how was he after the reunion? It was quite jolly, actually. So Mr Zawalski was inebriated too? Yeah, well, I guess. That's terrible. And this was the reunion of your team, right? That's right, the University 11. I organise it every year. So you and Charles were close? No, not really. In fact, quite the opposite. He wasn't much liked. Why not? Well, he never missed a reunion. He wasn't really even in the team. He was the scorer. Always had a bit of a weight problem. He got teased a bit. So why did he go to the reunions? I don't know. They're fun, I guess. So did you see him leave? Yes. In fact, I could probably save you guys some time. After the reunion, a few of us went back to our hotel. A few of you? Myself, Charles. A couple of work colleagues. So if you don't like Zawalski, why did you take him with you to party on? Well, it was my idea. I always felt bad about the way we treated him at uni, and there he was, after all this time, still hanging in there, you know? And I thought, well, this time, why not reciprocate? So who were these others? See, the thing is, um, we work for Nortex, the merchant bank, and even a hint of a scandal could cost us our jobs. What's your point? I'm asking for a bit of discretion. We're all team leaders about to get our annual bonus. They call it envelope day. And um, we're talking a lot of money here. Discretion shouldn't be a problem, Mr. Braddock, but we still need those names. You can start with who went back to the hotel. OK, um, Paul G and um, Jeremy, Jeremy Sands. Yes, yeah, so I hire a hotel suite every year. After the restaurant, we go back there and party. It's not illegal. <laughs> no one's saying it is. What we want to know is what happened after that. Were you with Charles Zawalski when he left the hotel, Mr. Sands? All three of us were. We all could together outside the hotel. And what time was this? Uh, around four. Charles went in one direction and we went in the other. And when you say we, who do you mean? Me, Josh and Paul. Look, this is really worrying. I've got to get back to my yes, job. Yes, we've I... heard about Envelope Day, Mr Sands. Is that why you wanted to meet us here, Jeremy? Look, there's a lot at stake. Surely it could have been an accident or, I don't know, suicide or... Well, you'd better hope so. If he was pushed or thrown off that footbridge, then that would be murder and manslaughter. A motorist was killed by the falling body, Mr Sands. A young girl. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now, where can we find this Paul G? Chardonnay? No, thanks. Shall we call you Paul? Mr. G and Paul, whatever. As long as it's not Wiz. G Wiz? It was a standing joke at uni. Hilarious. And what was Charles Zawalski called? Albert. After Fat Albert, Bill Cosby, you know? So did. You didn't like him? Not at uni, not since. Can we move this along? I've got a client arriving shortly. Business lunch, is it? Meal and deal. When did you last see Charles Zawalski? Outside the hotel. He went off to get a cab. Me, Josh and Jeremy went our own ways. Cabs too? Cars. Which was stupid, because we'd been drinking. Those RBT pricks always target the flash cars. And I drive a Porsche. So, Braddock, G and Sands were the last to see Zawalski. I drive a Porsche. <laughs> I hate these flash money market types. We work our asses off for nothing, and they sit around doing bugger all. Driving around in their Porsches. Given that opinion, I'm sure you will be happy to do thorough background checks on all of these people, right? What's happening, Sarge? Yeah, we're working with the cab companies, and we've uh, put in a request for the CCTV footage from the hotel foyer. Check this story. Mm, any credible motive surfaced? You read his column, Sarge? There'll be people lining up to chuck him off a bridge. Yeah, one thing we can't work out, if he was uh, walking off the booze after the hotel, it's not exactly a logical route. His home's in the opposite direction. He's probably too pissed to know where he was. A journalist motto, I drink, therefore I am. What is your problem with this guy? Oh, it's just 
He was a right-wing prick. At this stage, it's wide open. OK. Let's call it a day. We'll pick it up tomorrow. See you, Sarge. Who's there? Is someone there? What? Fluffy, you little bastard. Do you know how much that bastard's worth? Stiff's name came up as a person of interest under your registered number. I thought I'd better call you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, mate. Is that your Jeremy Sands? Yeah, that's him, more or less. We thought you should know the autopsy results have established your husband was already dead when he was thrown from the overpass. So suicide's off the agenda, is it? Do you have any idea who did it? At this stage, no. We're checking the taxi companies and doing a door knock of nearby houses. Charles embarrassed a lot of people. He made a lot of enemies. Miss Mild, if you know anything about anyone who might be involved in your husband's murder, we'll certainly investigate. And if I did, I'd certainly tell you. Sorry, I'm going to have to take this one. Sean, I said no interruptions. What is it, Simon? Jeremy Sands has had his head bashed in. He's dead. That could be connection, or it could just be a burglary gone wrong. Thank you for the information. I appreciate it. Enlighten me, Superintendent. How is it that despite all your resources, I learn about the death of one of Charles's friends before you do? Just heard. I know what you've just heard, Stanley. She's just been rubbing my nose in it. Get this sorted out. The sooner the better. Could just be coincidence. Unless we're working on the theory that someone out there is knocking off the members of the university cricket team. Maybe you could share your humour with the superintendent, Duncan. She's in need of a good laugh. There was nothing at Sands House to suggest it could be anything but a burglary gone wrong. Everyone from the reunion is accounted for except for Josh Braddock and Paul G. Neither of them turn up for work today and they're not at home either. No one knows where they are. No. Put wanted flags on the system for both of them and their cars. And get the local patrols to keep an eye on their homes. It's already done, Sarge. Senior Sergeant, I've got a Melinda Cosgrove's parents out here. Melinda Cosgrove? The girl who was driving the car when your victim took his swan dive. Ah. Probably wondering how the investigation's going. I know exactly how they feel. Whoever did the death message can't speak to them, please. Someone did do the death knock. Mr. and Mrs. Cosgrove, this is Detective Senior Sergeant Wolf. We've been looking for our daughter. They said to come here. What's going on? Look, if you'd care to uh, come to my office. Thank you. 